Hey folks, today we're working on worksheet number four, predicting single replacement reactions. There are 21 questions here, so there's a lot here, so just uh, kind of fast forward to the place or spot the place you need to go to be able to figure out the questions that you have. Okay, um, We are going to be working with the, uh, with the single replacement sheet, so pull that off, the activity series, pull that out so that you can work with it. I have done so as well. So I have the activity series in front of me so that I can tell which thing is more active, which metal is going to be more active. So let's start with number one. Uh, we look at iron, and we have iron here, and we have copper here, and we have to decide which one is more active. And the one that is more active, the one that's higher on the activity series, is iron. So iron is going to replace the chlorine. The chlorine would rather be with the iron. So we have Fe, and we have Cl and we have copper that stands alone now because the copper has been replaced by the iron. The question is what kind of charge do we have? Now one of the things that you'll notice is um, in the directions it says for transition metals use the charges shown on the activity series. So when you look at the activity series you'll notice that iron has a 3 plus charge and chlorine of course has a 1 minus charge so when I cross them I get FeCl3. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to balance our equations because we'll notice we have two chlorines on the left and three on the right. We know when that happens, we know what we have to do. We have to use coefficients to balance, and they have to be a two and a three so that we have a total of six chlorines on both sides. So that means we have to have three coppers over here on the right, and we have to have two irons over here on the left, and now we are balanced. All right, let's try and do number two. Um, we look at mercury and we look at tin and we notice that tin is higher on the activity series. So since it's already higher on the activity series, it's already with the sulfate, no reaction happens here for number two. Okay, how about number three? Well, barium is higher than nickel on the activity series. So the barium is going to go with the phosphate. And the thing that's going to go all alone is the nickel. And we know that barium has a 2 plus charge, and so that means we have a 2 plus, and phosphate is a 3 minus, so when we cross them we get BA3, PO4, and we have to have parentheses around the PO4, just like you see on the other side, to have two of them. Right, you'll notice we do in fact have two PO4s, so that's balanced, but we have to have three nickels, and we have to have three bariums. So we now have a balanced equation. All right, so we now have lead and gold. Gold is at the bottom of the activity series, so we know that lead is going to replace it. So immediately we can just write that we're going to have lead nitrate, and we're going to have gold. We know that's going to happen. And the lead nitrate, if we look at lead nitrate, lead is going to be a 2 plus charge on our activity series. So that means we have two nitrates over here. So again, we have to balance, so we have a 3 and a 2, we have 2 golds, and we have to have 3 leads. Why do we do the 3 and the 2? Again, notice we have, to, we have 3 nitrates on the left, 2 nitrates on the right. To balance them, you have to go up to 6, which means you have to have 2 times 3 and 3 times 2. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Number 5, lithium is the hottest thing on the activity series, so it is definitely going to replace the hydrogen. In, with the OH. So we're going to get hydrogen coming off and we're going to get lithium hydroxide coming off. Now, lithium hydroxide, Li is plus one, OH is minus one, they cancel each other out. But you have to remember over here, this is a Brinkelhoff element. Hydrogen is a Brinkelhoff element, so it is always diatomic. So that means it's going to be H2, so you have to be kind of careful with that one. Right, so now we are all done, so now we have to balance our equation. We have to have two of those because of the two for the H2. That means we have to have two OHs, and that means we have to have two lithiums. So we are now balanced. Right, remember that H2 is going to be a gas, so just to put something up there that's important, and this is going to be aqueous. All right, up until now, all of our elements have been solids, and everything else has been aqueous. All right, let's keep going. We have potassium and silver, and potassium is much higher on the activity series than silver, so we're going to get silver all by itself, 
and we're going to get potassium chloride. Potassium is plus one, chlorine is minus one. They cancel each other out. I am already balanced. That's all I've got to do. All right, how about number seven? We've got calcium and we've got sodium hydroxide. Calcium is higher on the activity series than the sodium is. So we're going to get calcium hydroxide and we're going to get sodium. And we'll get calcium hydroxide. Calcium has a two plus charge. So I need to have two hydroxides because hydroxide has a one minus charge. So I have to have CaOH2. To balance my equations now, since I have two OHs, I need to have two NaOHs, but that means I've got two sodiums. So I have to put a two in front of my sodium, and I am now balanced. Oops, sorry. All right, number eight. I've got copper, and I've got iron. Iron is higher on the activity series, so it's already bonded with the OH, so no reaction happens. Well, that means that the number nine must happen. So since iron is higher on the activity series, the iron is going to be with the OH. And we know that if you look right above, we can see that it's iron with a plus three charge. So it's FeOH3 plus copper. Well, I've got three OHs on the right and only two OHs on the left. So I have to have six in total. So I put a 3 in front of the copper, and I put a 2 in front of the iron, and I am now balanced. All right. Now it starts to get a little harder, because now what I'm doing is we're not giving you um, symbols. We're giving you words. And folks, in the real world, this is exactly what happens. We use the real, we use words. Um, you don't say PBCL2. You say lead to chloride, if that's what you're talking about. So, let's go ahead and do number 10. The first thing we have to do is figure out what in the world we have. We have lead to chloride. So that means lead has a 2 plus charge. Chlorine a minus 1 plus magnesium. Now I have to look at my activity series, and I see that magnesium is the one that's higher on the activity series. So magnesium is going to bond with the chlorine, and it's going to leave lead all by itself. And if I look at this, magnesium is a 2 plus charge, so I have MgCl2 plus lead. Well, you'll notice I have 1 Mg, 2 chlorines, and 1 lead on both sides, so everything is now balanced. How about number 11? Well, I've got barium nitrate, barium NO3. Barium has a 2 plus charge, so that's BaNO32 plus zinc. And that's going to give me, well, let's look at my activity series, and my activity series tells me that barium is higher on the activity series. It's already bonded with nitrate, so no reaction happens here for number 11. How about number 12? Potassium and tin for nitrate. Well, potassium is higher on the activity series than tin, so it's potassium plus tin for nitrate. Nitrate is NO3 and has a 1 minus charge. I need four of them to offset the tin. So the potassium is actually going to bond with the nitrate because potassium is higher on the activity series. And that leaves SN all by itself. Right. So now I have to balance my equation. And I notice that I have four nitrates on the left and only one on the right. So I put a coefficient in front that says I have four potassium nitrates, which means I need four potassiums. And I am now balanced. How about the next one? Copper and silver nitrate, AgNO3. Silver has a plus one, nitrate has a minus one, they cancel each other out. And when I look at this, copper is higher on the activity series than silver. So copper is um, going to replace the silver. So Ag is all by itself, and the copper nitrate goes together. As you'll notice that over here I put the element second, and here I put the element first. It really doesn't matter. Right? Uh, it makes absolutely no difference. It's whichever way you happen to choose to write it. All right. Uh, one of the things I do notice is the copper, according to my um, activity series, has a 2 plus charge. That's the more common variety. So I'm going to say copper nitrate with a 2 plus charge. So that means I need two nitrates. But that means I need two nitrates on my left. So I have to put a 2 in front of the silver nitrate, which means I need two silvers, which means I put 2 in front of the silver. So I am done. 
All right, how about number 14? Sodium phosphate and potassium. Well, potassium is higher on the activity series than sodium, so potassium is going to replace sodium. So uh, we know this is going to happen. So I have sodium phosphate plus potassium is going to give me potassium phosphate plus sodium. And I know that sodium is a 1 plus charge, and phosphate is a 3 minus charge. I cross them. I need Na3PO4. All right. Well, when I do that, that means I need to, let's see, I have the same problem with potassium, because phosphate has a 3 minus charge. Potassium has a 1 plus charge. So it has to be K3PO4. Well, now I need a couple of coefficients in here. I need three potassiums on the left, and I need three sodiums on the right to make everything balance. Okay, now how about gold and hydrochloric acid? Gold and HCl. Well, gold is the lowest thing on the activity series. Gold reacts with virtually nothing. So as a result, no reaction happens here at all. All right, magnesium and aluminum hydroxide. Magnesium is higher on the activity series. Magnesium will replace aluminum. So that means I have magnesium plus aluminum hydroxide giving me aluminum all by itself plus magnesium hydroxide. All right, well, aluminum has a 3 plus charge and hydroxide has a 1 minus. So when I cross them, I need three hydroxides. Remember those parentheses, they're very important. How about over here on the other side? I have magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium has a plus 2 charge. Hydroxide has a minus 1, so I need two hydroxides. Again, notice I've got two hydroxides on the right, three on the left. That means I need a 2 here. That means I need a 3 here for a total of six hydroxides on both sides. But now I have to balance my aluminums, and I have to balance my magnesiums, and so now I'm done. How about number 17? Well, as I look at number 17, iron is higher on the activity series than copper. So iron will replace copper. So I've got Fe plus copper 2 sulfate gives me iron sulfate plus copper. Now, what kind of charges do I have? Well, if I look on my activity series, I notice that iron is typically a 3 plus and copper is typically a 2 plus. So sulfate's a 2 minus. So over here they cancel, but on the right they don't cancel. So I've got two irons and I have to have three sulfates. So when I do that, I now have to put a 3 in front of my copper sulfate, which gives me three coppers, and it gives me two irons, and I am now balanced. All right, how about iron and nickel-2 iodide? Well, when I look at my activity series, iron is higher than nickel, so it's going to replace the nickel, and it's nickel iodide, plus 2, minus 1, that means I need to have two iodines when I crisscross them, All right? And the iron is going to replace the nickel. Fe I plus Ni. And what kind of charge do I put on the iron? Well, it tells me it's 3 plus typically. So I'm going to put Fe I 3. And again, we notice, I'm sorry, that's not a plus sign. That's an arrow. We notice again that we have three, irons on, three iodines on the right and two iodines on the left. So we have to put a three in front of that one and a two in front of that one to make them balance where they both have six. But now I've got two irons and I've got three nickels. So I have to make them balance. Okay. Sodium permanganate. Well, sodium and calcium. Calcium is higher on the activity series. So calcium is going to replace the sodium. So I have Na and permanganate. Go ahead and look that one up. All right, that's MnO4. And MnO4 takes on a 1 minus charge. And sodium takes on a 1 plus charge, so they cancel each other out. Plus calcium. Gives me calcium permanganate. MnO4, that's an M, guys. It's a very lousy M, but it's an M. MnO4 
plus sodium. Now, the problem is calcium takes on a 2 plus charge. MnO4 has a 1 minus charge, so I have to have CaMnO4 2. And uh, that means I need a 2 in front of sodium. And that means I need a 2 in front of sodium over here. Okay, so that should be balanced. All right, the last two, hydrochloric acid and zinc. Well, if I look at hydrogen and I look at zinc, zinc is higher on the activity series. So I have HCl plus zinc, and zinc is going to replace the hydrogen. Sorry, let's try that again. Zinc is going to replace the hydrogen, and the hydrogen is going to come off. Now, I had this type of problem earlier. Remember that hydrogen is one of the Brinkelhoff elements, so it's diatomic, so it's H2. And uh, let's see. So that means I have to have two of these. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, my bad. Zinc is plus two, chlorine is minus one. So I crisscross them, and I come up with ZnCl2. I have to have a two over here to have two hydrogens. That also gives me two chlorines, and so that solves my balancing problem. Everything is balanced. Remember, by the way, guys, that hydrogen is a gas at room temperature. All right, your final one is number 21. We have aluminum, and we have iron 2 dichromate. Well, dichromate is Cr2O7. And Cr2O7 has a minus 2 charge, and this iron, notice it says iron 2. This has a plus 2 charge. So they're going to cancel each other out. And so then we're going to have aluminum bonding with Cr2O7. And our Fe will be separate. Hmm. Well, now, are we done? Well, no, because iron is taking on a plus 2 charge. But aluminum, when it bonds, takes on a plus 3 charge. So that means I need to have three chromium dichromates and have to have two there because I'm crisscrossing my charges. Well, that means I have to have three over here so that I can have three dichromates on the right. And I need to have three irons to balance them. And I need to have two aluminums to balance them. And I am now done. All right. Folks, if you have any questions about these, please see me in class or see Mrs. Sherman in class. We'll be happy to help you. That is the stuff on single replacement reactions, predicting them, and uh, actually solving the problems and balancing them. Okay, that's it. Have a good day. We'll see you in class. Bye-bye.